This video will go over rooms that require you to do something special in order to access them, or are just hidden out of the way. These are not necessarily supposed to be super secret in the sense that no one knows about them, as most of the rooms on this list will be quite well known, and instead be more about rooms that are just generally designed to be hidden. Now, let's get started. At number 10, we've got the Purple Parlor. If you talk to the Blingatron 6000 and tell it to give you a party disguise, then talk to it again and ask where is the party, it will teleport you up to the Purple Parlor. Sometimes. It can also teleport you to other random locations, like when it threw my rogue in the middle of the tram, and again when it threw my priest in the grand right in front of Hemet. Well, about a hundred yards above him, anyway. Now, besides getting randomly teleported up here, you can also get here by just flying up to it. And you also get teleported to it as part of a quest when doing the stuff for the Broken Shore. So it's not exactly a super well-hidden room, but a hidden room nonetheless. Kind of. That, that's why it's only number 10 on the list. At number 9, we've got the secret room in the Scarlet Monastery. After killing the last boss, if you head to the right into a small room, you'll see a clickable torch on the wall. That, after clicking, will reveal a secret room. Inside the room is simply the corpse of an undead and Scarlet Crusade getup. But back in the original Scarlet Monastery, before the Cataclysm revamp, the undead was a secret boss named High Inquisitor Fairbanks. Now this guy was actually a pretty important lore figure in the Crusade, and was there when the Ashbringer was created. He also witnessed firsthand the betrayal that led to the Ashbringer being corrupted, and told anyone who would listen about the story. The people who took him seriously ended up forming the Argent Dawn, which would later morph into the Argent Crusade, and help take down the Lich King. But for his acts, and for being suspected as a carrier of the plague, he was murdered by the Crusade and locked away in a hidden room. There were originally no quests to kill him, but he was killable as an optional boss if you manage to find him in the original Scarlet Monastery. During the Cataclysm revamp, an undead named Dominic would give you quests to kill Fairbanks, but never actually tells you why you needed to kill him in his quest. His quest literally is just a variation of, go kill him, but don't ask me why. When Dominic was removed and replaced with Lillian Voss and Miss as the quest giver of the instance, Fairbanks was made no longer killable, and is in the state you see him in today, as just dead on the floor. If you manage to get the corrupted Ashbringer before it was removed from the game, and before the Cataclysm revamp, there was a scripted event that would take place with Fairbanks, which would reveal a lot of lore about the Ashbringer, and bring him back to life. Of course, this event is no longer in the game, and I actually think the dialogue and event that takes place was a retcon anyway, so that it never happened. I'm not 100% sure on that though. Probably the reason Blizzard removed High Inquisitor Fairbanks as a boss is because, lore-wise, we have no reason to kill him. He's not a bad guy, and I think Blizzard probably messed up adding a quest to kill him in Cataclysm. That's why when they revamped the quests, they removed him as a killable boss. And now his room is just a secret easter egg that only old players know about. And people watching this video, of course. There is also a hidden room called the Room of Hidden Secrets in the Twin Dungeon Scarlet Halls. Well, actually the room is not hidden at all, despite its name, but if you have a way to see ghosts, like my rogue with the detection ability, you can see two ghost squirrels running around this room. Number 8, the Rogue Order Hall. Now, everyone who plays a rogue knows about this, but at, I think, three locations around Dalaran, you can tell which shops by which have a little crow on their signs outside. There are hidden entrances to the Rogue Order Hall. All you have to do is talk to the shopkeeper inside and show your badge, and then you'll be allowed to take the secret entrance into the sewers of Dalaran. And inside the Order Hall, you have to hit a secret torch in order to get into a room with all the main members of the Order Hall where all your important quests are turned in. Now, seeing as this item on the list is literally a class order hall, I'll leave it at that and continue on. But I thought it was worth mentioning since the order hall fits the criteria of this video perfectly, 
and is a really neat idea for the secret sneaky class. All the other order halls are just teleported to in one way or another. Number 7. The Secret Cave Port to Gorgrund Want to know of a way to get to Draenor without having to do the intro campaign? Well, head over to the Timeless Isle in Pandaria and swim underneath where the frogs are located. You'll find a secret cave with four chairs surrounding a blue fire. Sit down in one of the chairs and the fire will become clickable, and teleport you to a random ass rock off the coast of Gorgoron in Draenor. And if you have flying unlocked, you can just go out and do stuff from there. Now of course, this isn't on this list for being a super secret teleport. It's here for the hidden cave part. The fact that there's something useful there is just a bonus. Speaking of hidden caves, at number 6 we've got the Garrison Caves. Inside both the Horde and Alliance Garrisons is a hidden cave underneath the fishing hut. Just head out to where the fishing place is located in either garrison and then just swim around for a bit. Eventually you'll find an entrance to a hidden cave underground. Inside the cave will be the bones of a person chained up, plus some free garrison resources in a box or chest. Number 5, the hidden treasure of Gennaro's Point. Inside the heroic mode of the revamped Zolgarub, you'll get a quest to obtain a stone or something, which requires you to kill the last boss, Jindo the Godbreaker. After doing so, he'll then give you a follow-up quest to get some extra treasure, which is completed by unlocking the treasure chest inside the statue in Booty Bay. Inside the statue is a small room filled with treasure, and of course, the quest objective, which gives you a toy and a few items that most bank tunes like to wear. Now, even though this place is basically just part of a fun little side quest, you can just come back here whenever you want. If you need a place full of treasure in a screenshot or as like a set piece or something. I don't know, what, do, what use do normal people have for hidden rooms now that I think about it. I mean, I like to think of these places as cool places to like hang out in streams or stuff to places to meet up or to get good background footage for videos. But I mean, now that I'm like writing this or reading it out, I fail to see the appeal to the average player who just plays the game normally. Besides, you know, like maybe our peers or something. If you want a room full of treasure, hidden treasure in Gennaro's Point. Number 4, the Goblin Hideout in Thousand Needles. Now this place is located underneath the boat in Thousand Needles, where all the quests take place. In order to access it, you just simply swim under the boat and look for where the anchors are coming out of the boat. The room is located literally right behind one of the set of anchors. Inside this underwater room is a table with Chinese takeout food on it, and a pinup calendar on the wall plus some weird machines. Now this room can't possibly serve any kind of practical purpose, since it's inside where the anchors are located, and was never meant to be not constantly underwater. So how anyone was able to eat Chinese takeout in a room full of water, or hang up a calendar, is beyond me. Which means this room is just purely a secret hidden room with no purpose other than to be a neat find for explorers. Kinda like the next place on this list. Number 3, the Secret Airy. This place is located right above the Veiled Stairs and has no quests, vendors, achievements, or pets associated with it. You can access this place on a ground mount by taking a series of rope bridges up the mountain, but it's easier to just fly up there. In the village are a bunch of named NPCs with no real lore significance, except one. If you go behind this small village, there's a secret cave with a Pandaren NPC named Hawkmaster Liu, and a bunch of hawks flying around him inside the cave. Hawkmaster Liu Welcome. is unique in that he has custom voice acting instead of the default Pandaren lines when you talk to him. Any friend of the Shadowpan is a friend of mine. And we'll even have a different dialogue option if you talk to him on a character that's quested through the town long steps. So I hopped on my old priest main who I quested and raided on back in Pandaria, and sure enough, he had a different dialogue option when compared to my mage, who did not do any of those quests. Since I usually 
use my mage to go out and get footage for these kinds of videos because of all of his teleports. Basically, his dialogue, if you hadn't quested, is akin to, nice to meet you, I've been watching you. And if you did quest through Town Long and met his brother, Hawkmaster Nurong, he'll say, word reaches me you serve with my brother in Town Long Steps. How was the young fellow? Did he ever tell you how he lost his eye? Which is funny because both of them have an eye patch. Other than the Hawkmaster being related to a quest NPC, there isn't really much more about this place. It's just a hidden cave in a hidden village that the game never leads you to naturally, and just randomly has custom voice animations on this hidden NPC. Maybe it was planned to be used for something and just abandoned, or maybe Blizzard just put it in as a fun little thing to explore. Who knows? Number 2, The Cave of Andrastraz. Now, this cave is located behind Encourage, of all places. Not the actual dungeon, but the zone the raid is located in. And on the coast of the continent, you can find a big tree at the entrance to a very out-of-the-way cave. Inside this moderately sized cave is a lone level 5 red dragon NPC named Andre Straz, who's sleeping. The dragon is not a character in lore. Which is strange, seeing as usually, named NPCs have some kind of lore significance, or are references to things. Someone asked someone at Blizzard what it might be, and he tweeted back with saying that it was probably a dev putting their kid in the game, or something, for funsies. Now, this isn't 100% confirmation, but it is the most likely thing. With Blizzard's new super hard, worldwide puzzles to get new mounts and pets, like the Mind Worm or the Lucid Nightmare, I can't help but think this dragon might be involved in one of those kinds of puzzles in the future. It just seems like too juicy of a thing to leave alone. A random named NPC, who's a dragon of all things, in their own cave with no quest or anything to point players there naturally? It's the perfect spot to hide a clue or puzzle. I also went ahead and checked this cave of my priest who's cleared Argus in the new raid and has Silithus transformed with Sargeras' sword sticking out. And the dragon is still there with no changes. So while it has nothing associated to it yet, you never know what the future might hold. And number one, the WKM room inside Orgrimmar. Now this room is probably the most hidden room on this list as you can only get to it by glitching out the game. There are a few other rooms like this that can only be traveled to by glitching, but I intentionally tried to leave them all out of this video. Except this one, of course, because it's in such a curious location. The room is located inside this rock right here. As you can see, there isn't really a way to get inside this rock without mount glitching through a wall and flying up through the base of the rock. Now, as for the room itself, all it has is a plaque that reads WKM, plus a candle in front of it. This place is theorized to be dedicated to an artist that died before the game came out, who also has a spirit healer named after him in the Barrens. But that's probably not correct, as he already has a memorial in the Barrens with the initials MK on it. And his full name was Michael Martin Coiter. So, WKM doesn't make sense in the context of his name. Anyways, that's the most widely accepted theory on what the plaque might mean, but I don't think that's what it is. But still, it is kind of an odd spot to have put a memorial in a place players normally shouldn't be able to get to. So it could be something else, like just a simple old easter egg. An easter egg no one can get to without glitching the game. Okay, and that's it for Secret Rooms, which was actually Half Caves. Do you know of any other cool secret rooms that I might have missed? Just let me know, because I most likely left them out because they were too hard to get footage for. Like the secret room in Putris's lab. 